the Lorentz transformation equations. By considering the time dilation and length contraction effects, uh, the Galilean transformation equations can be modified to have a relativistic correction. The set of equations that we obtain are called Lorentz transformation equations. Now, <clears throat> let's consider two events occurring at points P and Q reported by two observers in reference frames S, the reference frame S is at rest, and S prime, the reference frame S prime is moving with a relative uh, speed V with respect to S on the x-axis. Now, uh, the event at point P is reported to be at position X by the S reference frame and at X prime by the S prime reference frame. The event at Q is uh, reported to be at, at x plus delta x and uh, by s prime reference frame x prime plus delta x prime at t is equal to zero these two reference frames overlap so the distance between the origins is v times t okay so s coordinates are x y z t s prime coordinates are x prime y prime z prime t prime for the event at p okay so this is for uh, the event at P. Now, Galilean transformation equations, remember, uh, we have Vt plus x prime is equal to x, so x prime would be x minus Vt. y prime is y, z prime is z, and time is absolute in the Galilean transformation, so the event is uh, reported to be occurring at the same time by the two observers. t prime is t. And this will be valid when the speed v is much less than c and the relativistic correction factor is approximately equal to 1, so we don't need to consider relativistic effects. How do we correct these equations to take into account length contraction and time dilation when the speed is less than the speed of light, less than and comparable, let's say, to speed of light? We have to consider the relativistic correction. This equation, x prime is x minus vt, is modified to be x prime is gamma times x minus vt, y prime is y, z prime is z. Now, most importantly, time is not absolute in the Lorentz transformation. t prime is gamma times t minus xv over c squared. Uh, so, you can see that the time is related to space as well. And now, this if this v is much less than c, then this would become uh, negligible and gamma would become 1 and you would obtain t prime is t. When gamma is 1, you would obtain x prime is x minus vt. So you can see that we can easily recover Galilean transformation equations in this limit, v much, much less than c. So this is for the transformation from the s reference frame to s prime reference frame. Uh, so, in relativity, we see that space and time are closely related. Now, what are the corresponding Galilean transformation equations for x uh, equals x prime plus vt, y equals y prime, z equals z prime, t equals t prime. So, these are the equations going from s prime reference frame to s reference frame. And when they are relativistically corrected, Lorentz transformation uh, we'll have a gamma factor here, x equals gamma times x prime plus vt prime, v is less than or comparable to c, uh, y is y prime, z is z prime, t is gamma times t prime plus x prime v over c squared. All right, and now if we take uh, the s to s prime uh, transformation, what is uh, delta x prime? You can see that delta x prime will be gamma times delta x minus v delta t. So this is what we see here, gamma times delta x minus v delta t. Delta t prime will become gamma times delta t minus v delta x over c squared. And that's what we see here. So for the transformation from S prime to S, delta X is gamma delta X prime plus V delta T prime, and delta T is gamma delta T prime plus uh, V delta X prime over C squared. 
So this is in between two events occurring at delta x prime, x2 prime minus x1 prime, delta t prime, t2 prime minus t1 prime. Okay, uh, etc. So uh, this basically covers all the Lorentz transformation equations, relativistically corrected Galilean transformation equations. Uh, let's look at an example, simultaneity and time dilation revisited. Part A. Use the Lorentz transformation equations in difference form to show that simultaneity is not an absolute concept. Okay, let's start with this. Uh, so let's assume that two events are simultaneous in the S prime reference frame. So assume that two events are simultaneous in S prime frame and S frame is moving with velocity v Uh, to the left, so it's on the x-axis, with respect to S prime frame. Now we have uh, the following transformation equations. Uh, going from S prime frame to S frame, we have x is equal to gamma times x prime plus vt prime y is equal to y prime, z is equal to z prime, t is equal to gamma times t plus v over c square times x. Uh, so this is t prime, this is x prime. Now, <clears throat> if we write the difference form, delta x, is equal to gamma times delta x prime plus v delta t prime. Delta y is delta y prime. Delta z is delta z prime. And delta t is gamma times delta t prime plus v divided by c square delta x prime. Okay, so Lorentz transformation equations in difference form. Now we said that the events, two events are simultaneous in S prime reference frame. So the time interval between two events, delta T prime is equal to zero. So what does that imply for delta T? Delta T, you can look at this equation, is gamma times zero plus V over C squared delta X prime. So delta t is gamma times v delta x prime over c square. Now these two events are occurring at different locations in the S prime reference frame. So delta x prime is non-zero. So this is non-zero. Therefore, we can see that two events that seem to be simultaneous in the S prime reference frame appear to be not simultaneous in the S reference frame. So not simultaneous in the S frame. All right, let's move on to part B. Uh, use the Lorentz transformation equations in difference form to show that a moving clock is measured to run more slowly than a clock that is at rest with respect to an observer. Okay, uh, we have to measure the proper time in one reference frame. So let's say that the time measured in the S prime frame 
is the proper time. So that means the clock is at rest in the S prime reference frame. Uh, the proper time, delta TP, and if, we, if it's measuring the proper time, that means the event is occurring at the same location in the S prime reference frame, delta X prime is zero. Okay, so uh, delta T prime is equal to gamma times delta T minus V over C squared delta X. Uh, so this is our Lorentz transformation from S prime to S reference frame. So uh, this is from S prime to uh, S reference frame. Now this is S to S prime reference frame. Okay, so S uh, parameters to S prime parameters. And uh, since I have um, delta x prime is equal to gamma times delta x uh, minus v delta t, this has to be equal to zero. So I find that delta x is equal to v delta t, because the event occurred at the same location uh, in the S prime reference frame. The clock was at rest. So if I substitute that here, this is gamma times delta t minus uh, v square over c square delta t. So this becomes gamma times 1 minus v square over c square delta t. And what is this? This is gamma times uh, 1 over gamma squared. Gamma is 1 over squared 1 minus v square over c squared times delta t. So we see that this is delta t divided by gamma. All right. So uh, we find that delta t is gamma times delta t prime or delta t is gamma times delta t p. And since gamma is greater than 1, the measured time interval is greater than the proper time interval, delta t p. So we obtain time dilation. Because according to this reference frame, S reference frame, this clock is moving with a velocity v together with the S prime reference frame. And therefore, uh, we should see it to run more slowly. And that's exactly what we see here. It is gamma times delta Tp, where gamma is greater than 1. Okay, so here we've talked about a set of transformation equations that take into account relativistic corrections. The Galilean form for a reference frame S prime that moves with a relative velocity v with respect to S prime, S prime, which is at rest, our lab frame. For the speed much less than the speed of light, we have the uh, trans, um, transformation equations that are in traditional form, x minus vt, y, z, and time is absolute. But in the Lorentz transformation, we have length contraction and time dilation effects taken into account when the v is comparable to c or less than, less than comparable to c. x prime is gamma times x minus vt, y prime is y, z prime is z, t prime is gamma times t minus xv over c squared. And you can easily see when v is zero, it's much less than c. This term is negligible. Gamma becomes one. We recover Galilean transformation. And if you want to go from s prime reference frame to s reference frame, you have to change these primes to unprimed version. These will become primes and minuses will become plus. So that's the way we obtain the correct form. And uh, if you look at these equations in difference form, uh, delta x prime is gamma delta x minus v delta t. Delta t prime is gamma delta t minus v delta x over c square. And uh, 
in order to go from s prime to s we get rid of these primes make them unprimed we put primes here and make the minus signs positive okay uh, we have used Lorentz transformation equations in different form to show that simultaneity is not an absolute concept. We consider two events simultaneous in the S prime reference frame where delta T prime is uh, zero. So uh, our transformation from S prime to S reference frame is here, uh, which was also shown uh, here. So these are the difference equations. So. Um, when we have delta t prime equals zero, delta t is gamma v delta x prime over c square, which is not zero. So the, in the S reference frame, these two events do not seem to be uh, simultaneous unless this v is much less than c. Then this would become, this would approach zero, right? And uh, then we want to show that uh, the time dilation effect, uh, if the time measured in the S prime frame, which is moving with velocity v, to the right with respect to the S reference frame, the, uh, the proper time interval delta TP is measured, which means for this event, delta X prime is zero. The event start point and end point in time should be at the same location with respect to this reference frame, the S prime frame. The clock is at rest with respect to S prime frame. Okay, so delta T prime is gamma delta T minus V over C squared delta X, but delta X prime is gamma delta X minus V delta T. This must be zero for it to measure the proper time. Delta X is V delta T. We substitute that here. We obtain uh, gamma times one minus V square over C squared delta T, which is gamma times one over gamma squared delta T, delta T over gamma. So delta T is gamma times delta T prime, which is delta TP, the proper time interval gamma is greater than one so the time interval measured in the s prime rip appears to be higher than the proper time interval the clock seems to run slower in this reference frame that's our time dilation effect